Alrighty, what's up motherfuckers, and my peeps, how's it going you sexy bitches, Peter fucking Joseph here for video number 2, on your 2 for Wednesday, right here, on the Peter fucking Joseph YouTube wrestling channel, youtube.com slash Peter Joseph, thank you for watching, make sure you like the video, and subscribe right now to this very channel, and my other channels down there, in the basement, known as the description box below. And as always, you can follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Share the video all over the place. You know where to share it. Share it all over the, over the internet. And don't forget to tap and slap that bell. And I think we know how to treat that stupid bell. Smack it around. And that's it. And smack it around. Turn on all notifications. So you don't miss the next video, because if you miss any videos, you're pretty much SOL. And you know what that means. Ha! That's it. So, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment if you wish. And, uh, if this is your first time watching, well, welcome to the fucking party, pal. We hope you enjoy the ride. If not, go to sleep and go fuck yourself. Or just go to sleep and go, well... Just get out of here. We don't, we don't want you here. Get out of here. Go on somebody else's channel and do your garbage bullshit trolling. Because don't work here, my friends. And that's it. But if you're new here, you like what you see, hit that bell to get more. And please hit that subscribe button down below. And give my other channels your love and support as well. Alright, and like I said, um, in my first video, my NXT review, which is, you can just go back a video to watch. Uh, we're getting close to 500 subscribers here on the channel, but... Will we get there soon? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but it'll be nice to get there, at least, you know, but by, by this year. But, we'll see. We're nine away, so... It's January the... Well, as of this video, January the 11th, 2024. So we got... A long way to go before we even hit 500. And when we do hit 500 and stay at 500, because sometimes we go up below, sometimes we go up, up and down, like my dick in your mama's ass. But when we get to 500, I'll do a, I'll do a little quickie video, just you know, thanking everybody to, for getting me to 500 on the channel. But not a big accomplishment, but you know, it's nice. To get to a, a nice round number like 500 or 1,000 or 10,000 or whatever it may be. But, am I begging for subs to get to 500? No. If I get there, whenever I get there, I get there. If it takes 10 years, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm not here to get a lot of subs or a lot of views or comments or likes. I'm just here to offer my opinion on the world of professional wrestling and whatever I feel like talking about. And if you like it, good. If you don't, it's too fucking bad. I have a voice and I will use it. And I use it pretty damn well. Along with my, along with other things. <laughs> Ask your mom or your girlfriend that. Right? Right, ladies? But it is what it is. We got that. But more to come, my friends. More to come. In 2024. Because we're not stopping for anyone. Or anything. We might stop along the way. We might make a few pit stops here and there. But overall. We're not stopping cold turkey. For a very long time. But we'll see what happens. We'll see. Alright ladies and gentlemen. On this late Wednesday night. And you know what that means. Time for video number two. On uh, this late January the 10th, 2024. Or like I said, if you're watching tomorrow, or whenever you're watching this, January the 11th, 2024. Getting close to the midpoint of the year. Got a big rain, another rainstorm coming over the weekend. Another windstorm. Oy, oy, oy. And then next week is pretty much the worst week of the year. Because we're getting a little bit of snow here in the northeast. On, on, um, wait. Late Monday night, like after midnight, going into Tuesday, and mo most of Tuesday will be snowing. A little bit of rain, because it's going to be actually a little bit warmer than they originally said it. But then, things can change between now and Tuesday. But, 
the snow totals have been going like kind of up and down, like I said, like my dick and your mama's ass, between one to three inches and at, at most up to five, maybe seven inches. So hopefully we get to that at least, you know, one to three or we get what we got last weekend, that slushy gook that wasn't even a storm. So hopefully we get that, and then the, the temperature's going to be really, really, really cold, especially in the morning. It's going to be like 12 degrees. Ugh. Break out the parkas, break out the winter hats, and the gloves, and the scarves, and everything else, man. So, bundle up, stay warm here in the Northeast next week. Most of next week is going to be cold as balls. But by the weekend, we should be back up to like about 37, 38 degrees. We're supposed to get another storm next next weekend. Which probably gonna be you know the same as this this coming uh, Tuesday, so like about an inch or two of snow, and then on top of what we got on on this coming Tuesday, so gonna be icy on those roads, ladies and gentlemen. So if you're driving in New York City or wherever you may be driving in the Northeast and upwards, like New England and everything, you know, be careful. Do not let rock salt out. But hopefully, um, you know, it won't be that bad on Tuesday. But next weekend might be a little bit adventurous. But we'll see what happens with that. Let me move on. Alright, so video number two, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for your late night AEW Dynamite Homecoming Review. For January the 10th, 2024, we are emanating from, like I said, home base, which is Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. Duval! We got that. Alright, so AEW is back where it all began, my friends. Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. And, uh, well, tonight, not so good, Al. Not a great show. Uh, I think it, like, two things, two good things happen. The Samoa Joe segment with the new look belt. Great. And then our first match of the night, which I'll talk about in just a second. The Hangman, Anna Page, and Claudio went to war. That was great. Everything else after that. Pfft, down the shitter, we heard from the Undisputed Kingdom with my good friend Adam Cole, baby. And basically cut the same promo as last week. What happened there, baby? What are we doing here? Why are we cutting the same promo from last week? I don't I don't get that. And then the main event of It's Stink! And Darby Allen, how you doing when it comes to Seattle? Take it on to Kesta or take a shit out and Hobbs and a Texas Tornado match. Crazy! And uh yeah. Sting almost died. Well, both of them almost died. Sting and Darby almost died. Really, Sting almost died near the end uh, at the end of the match. That crazy spot he did to to Will Hobbs. I, I'm hoping Sting is not seriously hurt because the way he came down, whoo, 64 year old Sting. Uh, I don't think he's getting up. And surprisingly, he did get up. But man, I, I'm. I, I'm sorry, I think he got a concussion. Even though the referee was saying, his back, his back. Yeah, you broke your back. No, you gotta stop. You're 64 years old, Steve Borden. Stop it. I know you want to go out with a good old-fashioned Gilmore kind of like, bang! But do you really want to go out with a bang and, you know, never walk again? I'm saying... And, you know, Darby's almost 30, and he's about to be a paraplegic by the time he hits 35. It is what it is. We saw a return tonight. Wasn't a return. I, uh, well, it was a return, but not the people I thought was going to be on the show tonight. No Mercedes Monet when it had a, a perfect opportunity to, to debut her Tony Khan. And what happens? Nothing. Oh, it's imminent. Imminent my ass. So, I doubt it's going to happen next week. I don't even know where they're at. I think they're in South Carolina next week. I don't know where they are next week, really, to be honest with you. 
So, if, the, if she debuts next week, it's not going to be as Im- impactful. No pun intended with impact. Well, now it's TNA, but I can't say impact. But, it's not going to have that oomph that it would have had tonight or last week when it was in Jersey. The only person that debuted last week was Diana Perrazzo. Big deal. So, is Sasha going to be in AEW? They're saying she's pretty much signed? I highly doubt that. I think we're going to still see Sasha at the Rumble. I have a feeling. I think everybody and their grandmother are pretty much thinking that Sasha is going to, is like, it, this whole thing is a troll job, like the CM Punk situation, and Sasha will be number 30 at the Rumble. Or Liv Morgan, but, or maybe Alexa Bliss, who knows. Who knows. But, I mean, if Sasha is not at the Rumble... Then, then we're like, oh yeah, she might be at the first Dynamite of the year, which is in February. It's pretty much after, after Vengeance Day. So, I don't know. I don't know when, when Mercedes is going to debut in AEW, if she does debut, or if she's going back to WWE as Sasha Banks, though. Plus... Yeah, I got my cross back on now. I haven't had it on a while, on a while you know. People, people are like, where's your cross? I'm like, oh, here's my cross. The praise Jesus Christ the Lord! You know, gonna praise Jesus. But, it is what it is. Sometimes I don't wear it, sometimes I do. But, you know, I feel like wearing it today. What do you want me to do? And that's that. Yeah, so, that's pretty much it. I don't know, like I said, I don't know when Sasha's gonna gonna debut in AEW, if at all. She might go back to Japan. She might be at New Beginning in, in um, February, at the end of February, actually. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows when she's gonna, where she's gonna land. End up. But, you know, as of this video, we got 16 days till the Rumble, so we got pretty much two weeks to find out if Sasha's going to be at the Rumble, in the in the Women's Royal Rumble match, maybe at number 30. Because now everybody's going to watch 30. 30 comes out and it's... Well, it's not Sasha. It's Liv Morgan. It's somebody else, who knows. Maybe, you know, it can't be Julia because she's coming in April. It's not, I don't, it's not, Cam- I don't think it might be Camille. I mean, she did sign to NXT. Well, she's signing to, I think, NXT. But, can she be in the Rumble too? Eh, maybe. It could be Camille at number 30. That would be, you know, interesting. Camille Brickhouse. She's a brick house. She's my tomato. Just let it all hang out. Oh, we got that. Alright. Enough about that. But yeah, the show itself was not good, Al. Not so good, Al. And let's move on. Alright, so as always, our commentary team, the man behind the mask, Excalibur, Tony Baloney, Giovanni, my good friend, and maybe yours, and the man from Red Hook Brother, Taz! Also, Back Dog Jim Ross was there! Back Dog! Boomer Shooter in Florida! Back Dog! Back Dog! Okay, calm down, Jim. Calm down. You were there? Good. Back up! I'll stop. Yeah, Jim Ross was there to, to uh, commentate the main event. That's all you can do, really. But, good to see JR. Good to see good old Jim Ross back on. Boom it sooner. And we move on with that. Alright, so we start off the show with a banger and a slobber knocker, like JR would say. Slobber knocker back on! So we had Claudio Castagnoli, the Swiss cyborg, take it on the man who does a lot of cowboy shit. That is the hangman, Adam Page. You know, Adam Page last week coming out, saying he wants a fight. You know, got all pissy pissy about, you know, Adam Cole's promo and everything. Man, I mean, he's like, I don't care who the champion is. I'm going to fight him. I'm going to win back the AEW world title. 
So, kind of throws out, you know, something to Joe. And then, at the end of the show, he gets in Swerve's face again. So, I'm like, why are, we, why, why are you going at Swerve again? Didn't you learn your lesson at full gear? And that ultra-violent, bloody-as-fuck deathmatch? You can't top that shit. Come on now. Serious, like seriously. But, please, serious, like seriously, stop. Okay? So, anyway, this was a slobber knocker, pretty much match of the night. They start off fast and furious, beat the fuck out of each other in the, in the middle of that ring. They go to the floor, Claudio wins, wins the better of that exchange. Then they go back inside the ring, and some forearms to the, to the head, Brock the hangman. And Claudio then locks in the swing of doom. And then locks in the sharpshooter. And the hangman is screaming in pain, but eventually gets to the ropes to break the hold. So Claudio starts beating his ass again. But he gets caught with a fallaway slam, a little bit of strength from the hangman. And then a springboard clothesline sends Claudio to the floor. And then we get a slingshot flippy dippy dee doo to send him down again. And then the hangman pauses to drink a beer. Why not? Well, drink a beer. I was saying beer, but. Let's pause for a moment to drink something. Alright, so hangman does what he does best drinks a beer. And then he gets in the ring and Claudia. Oh my god, this, this, this part. This spot was fucking insane. Claudio picks him up in a gorilla press, and he's like, Ah, I'm Claudio, I'm the Sue Swiss Superman. Yeah. He picks him up and launches him over the top rope onto that small, dinky ramp. Ow! Everybody's like, holy shit. I'm like, we got a dead cowboy. That was crazy. As we go to break, thank we went to break, holy shit. But anyway, they fight on that little small ramp. Which that's how Daily's place is. I don't know why they, they made that stupid ramp. When they could have had a longer ramp, like back in the pandemic days. When they were there pretty much most of the year. In 2021. Well, 2020 into 2021. But anyway, they fight on the ramp. The hangman clotheslines Claudio into the ring, and then goes with a buckshot layer. It gets counted into Swiss death for a near fall. Then they go. And then um, they're beating each other up some more. The hangman knocks Claudio again to the floor, hits a moonsault, and then he goes up to that the bigger part, of the, st the big part of the stage where the fans are, and then the Announcers are over here, the big Tron over here. And he hits a moonsault off that stage and sticks the landing. It was a perfect 10. We got that. And then they go in the ring. Uh, Claudio looked for it, looked like he was about to hit a tombstone or some type of move. The hangman counters that into his version of the tombstone. Well, not Dead Eye, but the reverse tombstone. He has an actual. Undertaker like the Goat of Old Goats, by the way. Tombstone, Power Driver for a near fall. As we get, as, uh, you know, they take a moment, they take a moment, they have a breather to, you know, collect themselves. Then they beat the crap out of each other some more in the middle of that ring. The hangman gets the, gets the, gets the better of that. Picks up Claudio, hits the dead eye, so he hit the front and back version of the Tombstone Pal Driver. So he gets a new fall out of that. Claudio comes back, takes him into the corner, and then tries to he put, picks up uh, Hangman on the top rope, tries for a super Ricola bomb. But the hangman reverses that into a hurricane rana. Then he goes outside, hits not one, but two buckshot lariats, knocking Claudio the fuck out. Goes for the cover. One, two, three. The Hangman Adam Page gets the win in 17 minutes. 
pretty damn good match. I gave it 3.25 out of 5 stars. And like I said, your match of the night. And that's it. We move on. Big win for the, for the Hangman. Well, not the last we'll see from him. And that's that. Alright, after that, we get a nice uh, video package for Brody Lee. Uh, they're back in Daly's place where Brody Lee made his epic debut as the Exalted One. Would you see Cody in some of those packages? Uh oh. Tony Khan might be going, getting a call from WWE. You can't show that. Well, it's AEW uh, copyright there, so they can show Cody. <laughs> fuck you, Nick Khan, man. And fuck you, Hunter, for that matter, too. When we get that. All right, after that, that was pretty nice. A little, little tear jerking, you know. Been f almost four years to the date. Uh, in March, it'll be four years since Brody made his debut in Daly's Place. Mar it was in the beginning of March, I believe. Of 2020. So. You know, been, been uh, three years since he passed. His birthday was in December. You know, it sucks that we missed, we lost Brody Lee. And then last year, we lost Bray Wyatt. So they're probably having a tag team death match up in heaven with Terry Funk and I don't know who. Maybe the, I would do with a butcher. Who knows? Who knows? But we got that. All right. Then we go to match number two. We got an eight-man tag team match player. So we have the natural. Well, I guess I don't know if you can call it a natural, but anyway, we have... The other, the good version, the good Rhodes brother, that's Dustin Rhodes, Preston Vance of the, uh, the Faction de Ignobles, along with Jose Alapino on a stick, the assistant. We had freshly squeezed orange juice, the, the AEW Intercontinental Champion, uh, teaming up with the rated R superstar. Hey kids, it's Edge. Adam Copeland, Threshold, what do you want to call him? Alright, so they team up against the Mogul Embassy with my good friend and yours, Prince Nana. Well, he's not dancing yet, but he will be. As he brings out the Ring of Honor six-man tag team champions, Brian Cage, otherwise known as Sega, with those stupid tights, and the Gates of Agony, Toa Le Leona, and Bishop Ron I do not Quan. Quan! I do not Quan! You mean all my name is Queena? I do not Quan. If you play Final Fantasy IX, you get that reference. If you haven't played Final Fantasy IX, oh boy, you are missing out on that good on a great game for the PlayStation 2. Actually, you could play it on PlayStation 4. You play pretty much. You play seven and eight. Well, the old version of seven, not and the new version too. Well, the first version, the first part, not Rebirth. Rebirth's on a, on PlayStation Five. Why I don't know. Why is Why is Part Two on PlayStation Five? Can we Can we just have the games like it used to be when you got the PlayStation Four? You could play PlayStation Three and Four games. You know. I mean, the new game would be on PlayStation 4, and you could also play it on PlayStation 3. And then, when the PlayStation 5 came out, it, you know, the new game would be on PlayStation 5, and you could also play it on the PlayStation 4. Some games, but now you can't even play half the new games, because everything's now new on PlayStation 5. I mean, I don't care, I really finally got it, but... I'm waiting for that to come out. Actually, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the second part... Of Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Uh, coming out on Leap Day. February 29th. Of all days. Crazy ain't it? But that game comes out. I mean. Everybody and their mother is going to be playing that. I mean there's going to be loads of content. Playing that game. Blind walkthroughs. You know. Adam Cole Baby is going to be playing that. Probably the day it comes out. So. Stay tuned for his Twitch channel. 
He played Final Fantasy 16. Oh man, yesterday was a freaking ball. He was playing that game. He's fighting Titan. It's early on. He was playing it. I mean, he started playing it. And he got up to Titan. It was like a 30 minute boss battle. Which shouldn't really take that long if you know what you're doing. But, you know, he's playing it for the first time. And it was a freaking war with Titan and Clive. Holy crap. I was like, this bad battle going to end? Jesus. Jesus! But that's how it is because Titan goes into like 6,000 forms. You think he's Sephiroth. Or Rock the Rock, you played Final Fantasy 13. Damn, that battle is... And, and that's just like like in the middle, like right in, in the first part of the game. You go right into a, like a 30, 30 minute to hour long boss fight. Because his freaking HP is massively a lot. Not massively, you know, like certain bosses, but you know. Well, it takes forever... I mean, you can't, you just can't one-shot Titan. I wish you could, but you can't. Certain bosses, you can. The early bosses, obviously. You can just one-shot them sometimes, but... Not somebody like Titan, or Odin, or even Ragnarok. Holy shit. Because it goes into like four, five, six phases. You think you're done. Nope, there's more. And then, he, and then, then his freaking HP bar goes like from like this, like... Bleh! And it goes in a different color because you think like he goes from like blue to red and blue to green and then finally he goes to red and you almost kill him and then you finally kill him. Oh my fingers hurt. But man, that boss battle was crazy. I mean, finally Adam Cole got through that battle and he's like, oh, I can't believe it's over. And everybody all of us in the chat are like, thank the Lord! And for those of you who haven't played it, oh, when you get to fight Titan, oh, bless your heart if you get through that. You're gonna, you're gonna need some coffee. You're gonna need to stretch out a little bit. But I'll tell you this: after Titan, oh, it gets a lot harder, and I mean a lot, because you have to fight uh, certain other people in the game, like Joshua. Other guys in that game, and other demons in that game, they are way hard. If you got the right summons, you can pretty much kick his ass, but... You got the right summons, and the right weapons, and the right... You know, attributes and shit, and like attack times five or whatever... It's gonna be hard for you. You don't have. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. So it might take you like 35 times to beat the next boss after Titan. So good luck. But Final Fantasy 16 is a great game. Great game. 15 was good. 16. This one is great. I can only imagine what what's next if they do Final Fantasy 17. That game is endless. That game will never end. We have like 69 parts. Did I say 69? That game is endless like freaking Zelda. Oh, sorry, Link. or Zelda? The games that will never end. They'll have so many spin-offs. Like Tears of the Kingdom, and then they'll have another one after that. Final Fantasy will just never end. There'll be so many spin-offs and different versions. You know, remakes of 7. You know, Reapers coming out. You know, in about a month from now. And then the final part, which I don't even know what the name of it is. I think that's coming out in like 2026. Or 25. I don't know when that's coming out actually. But that's going to finish the game. I really want them to remake 9. But make it good. As, add a couple things. Keep the same freaking setup. But add a couple things. You don't have to add everything. I mean, it's four discs. First of all, the f original game is four discs. Imagine how they're going to make that. The remake. Th they'll remake that. Only imagine how they're going to remake Final Fantasy IX. 
But that game is not as long as Final Fantasy 12 or 16. 16 is long too. 15 is long too. But 16, you gotta do all the hunts and the side quests and everything. Ball. That's Final Fantasy for you. They want you to get everything. If you want to complete the game 100% and get all the trophies and stuff. 12 is just ridiculously long. Because you have to do all the hunts. And some of them are hard. But. Anyway. Enough about Bishop Quan. So. So we got the Gates of Agony and Brian Cage. Team up with the Murderhawk mon Monster. Everybody dies. Nice Archer came out with Jake Roberts. Tommy. You could have picked anybody to be your partner, but you picked Jake Roberts. The fuck is wrong with you? Why, Jake Roberts? What? Well, yeah, Jake, Ro Jake the Snake Roberts at ringside with Prince Nana, and then Jose Alapino on the stick. On the face team, which is kind of weird that Preston Vance was on the face team. But we move on. Uh, Mac was mm, eh ish. Uh, starts off with uh, Dustin Rhodes power slamming uh, Toa Leona to start. And then uh, he gets headbutted by Toa. And he's like, ah! And then Dustin's like, whoa, shit! So then Preston Vance comes in, another big beefy man. Gets driven into the corner. The machine Brian Cage comes in, sends Vance into the turnbuckle. Out. And then Edge comes in, starts beating beating on the machine Brian Cage. And then freshly squeezed orange juice. He comes in and does his usual shit on the gates of agony. And then Toa Leona hits the Pouch! Period. Sending Orange Cassidy to the floor. Crazy. Go to break. Come back. Lance Archer starts beating on Oates, um, Mr. Orange Cassidy in the corner. And then Jake Roberts and Jose Alapino and his stick. The assistant get into a fight. Why would you go after a 60, almost 70 year old guy that pretty much can't fight much anymore? He's all broken, beat down. He can't, probably, can't even do the DDT. Or well, much of anything. Because he almost he almost died about about almost a, year, a few months to a year ago. Remember when, when we saw him? He had all the, all the, the oxygen tank on and everything. Because, you know, all the drugs and all the shit that he went through. Mm, it's catching up to him, man. But he's still kicking ass. Still kind of look, He still looks good. But, you know, he just went through a rough, rough time. And it wasn't for Diamond Dallas Page. Freaking Jake the Snake Roberts would be dead by now. Well, I mean, DDP saved Scott Hall's life. He saved Jake the Snake's life. Pretty, and pretty much other people, too. With that DDP yoga. And ain't your mama's yoga. Gotta get back into that. Anyway. Alright, so they get to get to a fight on the floor and have to scratch it, let Orange Cassidy uh, fight his way over to a hot tag to Preston Vance, who cleans house, and then all four men are in the ring. Uh, Edge hits the impaler on the machine Brian Cage, and then the 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 fate the uh, excuse me, the heels clear the ring, and then uh, Edge Edge was up. Uh, Brian Cage had Edge, you know, wanted Lance Archer to hit him, and then Edge, you know, ducked, and Brian Cage, and Archer hit Brian Cage, oops, and then, uh, you know, Cage just thinks like, oh, fuck, and then Edge clotheslines him over the top rope, then he hits the spear on Brian Cage, 
And then Preston Vance, who's the legal man, his his yeah, his the discus lariat. One, two, three, and under ten and a half minutes, uh, the faces get the win. This was a Brody Lee tribute match. I think Brody would have liked it, but probably would have took that his roll of paper out. Who the fuck is Griff Garrison? Ah! And then next next thing you know, they're eating chilies. Chilies, baby back ribs. I don't eat ribs, but I, you know, I go to Chili's for something. Well, other than the ribs. Just saying. Just saying. But we get that. So, nice little tribute to Brody. And a good match. Faces win, obviously. So the match was okay. Give it three out of five stars. That's pretty much, pretty much it. Maybe more. Uh, there was a, you know, after the match, you know, uh, Lance Archer got all mad at Brian Cage, and then they left. That was, that was, it was, it was just that. That's it. We move on. Alright, so three out of five stars for that. Alright, after that, we go to the back with Renee Paquette, and her special guest, the bu bu Bullet Club, to sweep me, for the love of God. Guns up! The Bang Bang Gang of the Ass Boys, Colton and Austin Gunn, and the Switchblade. Play with Switchblade. Jay White. They're there. And they talk about the Undisputed Kingdom. But first, they want the Trios Championships. The six-man tag team belts. The Trios Championship. That the Acclaimed have. And on cue, the Acclaimed and come out. Anthony Bowens, Max Caster, and Daddy Ass... Billy Gunn, and by the way, ladies, Susami, mommy ass! So they come in, and, you know, they start arguing for a little bit, and then, pretty much, Anthony Bowens, the voice of reason, is like, hey, you know, we have a common enemy in the Undisputed Kingdom, so how about we form this mega faction, and he wants to call it the uh, Bang Bang Scissor Gang, Really? Really? Do you have to take something from the 49ers and just add a thing in there? Bang, bang, Niner gang. Two weeks away, baby. Actually, next weekend. We're off this weekend. We don't even care. But we're off this weekend. We're just waiting to see who wins between the Eagles and the Buccaneers on Monday. Or maybe who wins on Sunday between the Rams and the Lions. Or... The Cowboys and the Packers. That's a Sunday night game. Bucks and the Buccaneers and the uh, the Eagles will play on Monday night. So as we're watching Raw, I'll probably be pitcher and pitcher with Raw. Well, I might watch a little. I might put in pitcher and pitcher, but I'll probably just watch Raw. But I'll go back and forth to see what the score of the game is, and uh. I went with the other dog. I went with the Buccaneers to beat the Eagles because the Eagles look like shit right now. They are floundering right now. Cry, Eagles, cry. You're going to get eliminated. If not this week, definitely next week. In Santa Clara. Where that sta Levi Stadium is going to be rocking. And it's not going to be fr from an earthquake. Because the Niners pretty much have the week off to repair. They're going to be well-rested. Eric Armstead was on the practice field. Hopefully, he's get he's going to get back to 100%. Because we really need him. And so, we got, some, we got uh, McCaffrey. You know, he's... Uh, I don't think he, he's um, practicing yet. He still has that calf injury. But he'll be, he'll be ready to go next weekend. Running over whoever it is that we play. Getting 6,000 touchdowns. I mean, the Niners should win next week. They, sh they, they should win. If they play the Bucs, that's... You know, might be a little bit tough, but I think the Niners can destroy the Buccaneers. The Eagles? 
depending, you know, depending if they wake up and obliterate the Buccaneers in Tampa Bay next uh, this Monday night. That might be a little bit tougher. Might be a toughie at home, but I mean, we went into that shit hole in filth, filth, uh, Philadelphia and whipped them forty-two to nineteen. Whipped them because they couldn't stop the run. So they have a really bad secondary. You see how bad Jalen Hurts looked in that game against the Giants last on uh, this past Sunday. He looked like shit. That offensive offense just went to sleep. The defense gave up thirty, almost thirty, gave up twenty-seven points to the Giants, and they were down like twenty, like twenty twenty points in the first half. It, it, it was like what? It was like what's happening here? And they lost twenty-seven to to ten, I think. But they don't write the ship. They could be they could be bounced in the first round. They went from the Super Bowl to getting bounced in the wild card by, wild card round by the Buccaneers. But it's gonna be a great wild card weekend. An amazing wild card weekend. Might see some upsets. We'll see what happens with that. I'm hoping the Buccaneers win. Uh We'll see what happens with the Lions and the and the Ram, and, the, and the Rams. Pretty much, I don't care who wins that because they'll probably face the Cowboys or the Niners. But, but the Rams will be at full strength if they play the the Niners. They got Cooper Cup coming in. Oh, I hate him because the, the Niners can't even, won't be able to cover him. You know Stafford, who looked, who just you know is coming will be coming back. You know, you know the streak of five, I think it was five straight regular season games that ended last week. It was a meaningless game this past weekend, so didn't really, I don't really count that. So they still own them. No, well, we could get a an NFC division game against the Rams and the and the Niners, or the Lions come in. And we got that first time ever for this, this season. That might be a little bit tough with Jerry Goff and company. You know, they got an explosive offense. But so do the Niners. I think it's just going to come down to the defense. And maybe, maybe that schmuck, Jake Moody. If you miss a field goal in this playoffs, you're cut. Get him out of here. Bring back Robbie Gould or get an actual kicker that can fucking kick good game-winning field goals. So I really think if he didn't miss miss an extra point and a field goal in that game on Sunday, the Niners would have won that game. Or at least, yeah, they would have won that game. Even though it was a meaningless game. So, I'm not happy we lost. But a game... You know, would have been nice to go thirteen and four, but we went twelve and five. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, whatever. All right. So anyway, so they want to form this alliance called the Bang Bang Scissor Gang, and then so uh, Jay White and the Aspers they leave, and well, before they leave, they say, "Well, we need some more time to think about it," and then they start leaving. Get out of here. We're not going to scissor you guys. So we'll see what happens with that. And we move on with that. So I gave that three out of five stars. That's it. All right. Then we go to the ring with the champ, the AEW World Champion Samoa Joe. Nice suit. Nice little little fit there. And he probably got that fit at the Men's Warehouse. That's always our sponsor. Because when you go to the Men's Warehouse, you want to look good. Get a nice suit. Get a nice tie. Get some nice shoes. Nice slacks. Shave, to, you know, shave that manly beard, that that hippie beard, or that that homeless looking beard that you have, or in some people's case, look like a rat. But but look good when you go to the men's warehouse and then get a makeover after that, and then maybe just maybe you'll get laid. <laughs> maybe I doubt it, but maybe and maybe just maybe you know. Yeah, you like the way you look. I can almost guarantee that. To some people, not all of you, but with me, I guarantee that all the time. 
Because when you look good, you feel good. That's a commercial. Just remember that. It's a commercial. What's that? Alright, so Samoa Joe comes out with the brand new looking belt. The, went back to the black strap. Nice. Uh, new look to the AEW, the, the, the front of the belt. New, the AEW logo, not like the, the old version of the AEW belt. Different side plates with his name on it. That's nice. I actually like the belt. Looks good. Looks pretty damn good. Like the TNA belts. They showcased the world title today. Nice. Scott Demore, you are the man, my friend. I can't wait. I, I might actually watch a little bit of uh, Hard to Kill this Saturday night. Along with, well, I gotta watch Collision too and Battle the Belts. But I'll watch a little bit of uh, Hard to Kill. I'm not gonna review it, but. I don't know. I don't know. I might I might get back into TNA, watch some TNA, maybe do some more. Maybe bring back the TNA reviews. Let's see. But, you know, I gotta do Ring of Honor too, so. I might, I might combine it, do a Ring of Honor TNA review, instead of, or maybe I'll just do Ring of Honor, uh, late Thursday nights, and then Friday afternoon, Friday, well, Friday afternoon, or whenever I can get to it, I'll do TNA reviews going, going into, uh, later this year. Well, we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. You know, I want to try to add a little bit more to my, to my channel, so, probably, probably I'll do, uh, Raw and SmackDown, Raw and SmackDown, Collision, Ring of Honor, and TNA on my Kill Demons channel. And on this channel, I'll do pay-per-view reviews, and I'll do Dynamite and NXT. That's it. So, but we'll see what happens with that. But if you want you want me to bring back the TNA reviews, leave, leave, leave some comments down below. Alright, so Joe comes out with the belt. And then we got a thank you, Joe! Thank you, Joe! chant from the from the marks in the crowd at Daly's place. So Joe's like, well, I'm the champ, and it's time to make some changes on you know with the world title protocol and who gets title shots. So here's what we're gonna do. No more whining and, and complaining and crying and bitching and complaining and bitching and complaining. In the ring or on social media. Ooh, is that a diss to Tony Khan? Mmm. So he's like, bring your record and your reputation and submit it to the championship committee. There's a committee now? And if you're deemed worthy, you get the right to get beaten up. How about just bring back the, the ranking system like they used to do like about a year or so ago? Remember when they had the ranking system? Bring back the ranking system. Don't just give out title shots to people that don't really deserve it. The same. So Joe, you got a point, and I, I believe you. I mean, how can you how can you disagree with Joe? Anyway. So he says the new championship era is here, and for all who want a piece of him, I will be waiting. And then we hear the music of I swear when I drive and swear when I drive. So the man, Swerve Strickland, comes out, flanked by the Mogul Embassy, and Nana doing the dance. Everybody's like, oh, that's all Prince Nana's for, doing the stupid dance. Not stupid, it's actually good. And if, he, and if he goes down in AEW history for just being the guy who danced, who came out dancing with Swerve, I guess that's an accomplishment. But anyway, Swerve and Company get in the ring, and Swerve gets on the mic, says, Duval! Then he says, Whose house? Swerve's house. Whose house? Swerve's house. And don't forget, he's that guy, the, for the so-called prince, former prince of the prophecy, that's his cousin. But, who cares? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so Swerve declares that it's his house, and then basically said the same thing he said to Hangman last week, that it's not personal, but 
I want what you got. And that's that belt. So Joe's like, oh, you want the belt? Okay. So Sora's so like, once I take your title, and then and um, Joe makes it a little bit personal, I could do that too. So once I take the belt, we'll make this real personal. Hmm. So then after that, the hangman Adam Page comes out. Oh my like, god, oh, really? You just killed you just Buzz kill. So he comes out and says, Hey, well, I'm gonna throw my name into the hat too for the title picture. And he talks about what he did in 2023, which wasn't much, except for that death match he had with, with Swerve. Promises to make make it his year make this year his year, get the belt back. And then he gets right in Swerve's face, and they're about to go at it again. I was like, oh no, not again. And then Nana, thankfully, you know, pushed Swerve aside. He's like, oh no, 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 not now. So Swerve's about to go after him, but then leaves. So, we got that. I thought that was going to be the end of the segment. And then Joe and Adam Page go face to face. And Page says, I remember what you did to me. And promises to take the belt. I guess he means with the whole the devil situation when the, when they beat him up and um dropped him on a car on the wind on the, on the windshield real glass by the way. So I guess he's mad about that. I don't know. Look at that. So he leaves and then Joe holds up the belt and then then we hear the music of "Send for the Man." Hook. Hook comes in, confronts Joe, gets right in his face. And says, give me one week. So, Joe's like, okay. So next week, we got we got Hook versus Samoa Joe for the AEW world title. And then his dad, Taz, is like, what the fuck is going on here? He's confused. Maybe he's like, oh, I don't think you should have waited a week. So, yeah. Hook's going to get the title shot, lose, and bad, I mean, pretty badly. So, I mean, it just makes Hook look like, like shit. I mean, Monday, this Monday we got Ginger My Balls against Seth Rollins for the world title. I think that'd be, be uh, a better match than Hook and, uh, and so on Joe. Probably last longer, too. I mean, Ginger might might come close to winning the belt. I mean, Hook might, too, but... I think the quality of the match, I I, I have to go with with Seth Rollins and Ginger my balls. Because Joe and Hook, I mean, they could put on a slobber knocker. But, I don't know. So, we got that. So, that entire segment, pretty damn good. Gave it three and a half out of five stars. So, next week, like I said, we got Joe versus Hook for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. That's pretty much it. Alright, then we go to the back with Renee Baguette once again. And her guest, the timeless one, timeless Tony Storm. Who's flanked by Luther, not Luther, Luther. And the beautiful Mariah May. Ooh, yes. Mmm, scrumptious. Booty! So they're there. And Mariah's like, Miss Storm, did you... Care to watch my match last week? And Tony's like, "Well, I got a, I got a screening of it, but I barely watched any of it." And then Renee's like, "Oh, did you see the the date the debut last week?" And then she goes, "Wendy Richter? No, not Randy Richter. Uh, it was Diana Perazzo." So Mariah's like, she kicked me in my face. And then Tony's like, darling, have a chocolate. <laughs> she gives her a chocolate kiss. Like, come on. That's funny. So Tony's like, I want to meet this Diana Palazzo. Oh, she calls her Donna Palazzo. <laughs> so... I guess next week, I mean, Deanna's going to have her uh, first her debut match on Collision against, I don't know who. I think Queen Amanada, I think. I don't even know, but 
Anyway, she'll be on collision. So, Tony, Tony Stone's like, I want to meet this Donna Palazzo person. And she's like, until then, chin up, tits out. Line? She forgot her line. How do you forget your line? And then Mariah May, Mariah May tries to help out. She says, watch out for the shoe. And then Tony's like, ah, you ruined it. That was hilarious. I actually marked. I actually marked out for it. I mean, to Tony Storm is probably one of my favorites in AEW right now. Of the women, besides Sheeta, you know, everybody else. But she is one of my favorites. Every time I see her, it's just hilarious. She she is knocking this gimmick out of the park, and she's the champ for the second time. But, man, you got Harley Cameron looking like a, a million bucks with those. I don't care if they're fake, but, they, I mean, she got some big, big ass titties. Uh, you know. Now you got Diana Perrazzo coming in to kind of inject, inject the women's division a little bit. And we'll see what happens with that. But that was hilarious. Chin up. Tits out. Watch out for the shoe. You know, if Tony Storm was Puerto Rican, she'd be like, Chit up, tits out, and watch out for the chunkla. Because you know how those Puerto Ricans are when they get mad? They, they get mad, they're like, I'm going to hit you with my chunkla. But I think it's you, Bobby. I bet. I'm going to make you an empanada. And there's some Spanish rice. And then I'm going to go to town on your dick. Your binga. I'm like, oh. That's a, that's a good night. But anyway, we get that. So I gave that three out of five stars. Just amazing from Tony Storm. We'll see what happens with that. And we move on. Alright, after that, we go back to the ring with Absolute Vicky Starks. One half of the AEW Tag Team Champions along with Big Cass. So he takes on one half of the sex gods, the Spanish gods, Sammy Guevara. Pretty decent match. Uh, Big Cass and Jericho, not at ringside for this match. One on one, straight up. So it's also with Ricky uh, working on a basic wrist lock to start. Sammy comes back with a basic headlock. So, you know, basic wrestling one on one there. And then after that, uh, Sammy knocks Ricky to the outside, hits a moonsault, and uh, kind of hit Ricky in his shoulder arm area. I was like, oh, oh, and he was like hurting. I was like, oh no, we don't need another injury. But he was able to fight it off. They get back up on and fight on the apron, and then Ricky hits a double underhook face plant, almost like a pedigree, on the apron. Ow! That hurt. I mean, the apron is the hardest part of the ring. After all. Anyway, so he takes over as we go to break. We come back. Sammy Guevara comes back. Knocks Ricky down. Goes to another moonsault. But Ricky got his, his boots up. Then Ricky hits a sit-up powerbomb for a near fall. And then... Uh, Sammy tries for the go to hell. But... Uh, Ricky reversed it into a roll up for a near fall. They get back up. Sammy kicks him in the right in the face, not once, but twice. Then he grabs a small package. One, two, three. You know, kind of cheap win for Sammy, but he still got the win. Match was alright. Gave it three out of five stars. After the match, they uh, surprisingly shake hands. Or say, you know, they they grew up to get, they didn't grow up together. They you know they fought together on the Indies and everything. They grew up on the Indies. You know, so mutual respect, I guess, in the middle of that ring. But it was all a hoot as Big Cass. He's seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. So he comes out, beats up on Sammy. So a two-on-one beat down. And then the champion, Chris Jericho, comes out with his bat Floyd. 
from behind, his big cast in the stomach with the bat, his freaky stomachs in the, in the, in the back with a bat, and then both, both of them fight, well, Sammy and Ricky fight on the ramp, while Jericho and Big Cass fight through the crowd, while uh, Judas was playing, obviously because, you know, Tony Khan didn't want to hear the booze, but Jericho was still getting that shit with the NDAs and the whole Kylie Ray's thing, I mean, get over it, get over it, plus that, so they fight into the crowd, kind of like a prelude to them, their street fight match for the AEW Tag Team Belts at Battle of the Belts this Saturday night. That's live, by the way. So we got three hours of live AEW television. Collision from 8 to 10, and from 10 to 11, Battle of the Belts 9. So we got that. Alright, so we got all that. Alright, then we get to the death slot. And it's eight women tag team action. Another Brody tribute match. So we have the resident fun girl, Willow Nightingale, Chris Statlander, who comes out, and then we see Stokely Hathaway in the crowd with a stupid sign. Please let me manage you. Chris takes down the things like Stokely, and he goes... And then leaves. Stokely, you are a creepy bastard. <laughs> anyway, so they team up with Anna J, the woman with a flat ass... And a mean, mean attitude, Miss Miss Ninety Nine from the Dark Order. You know, the only woman in the Dark Order who was handpicked by Mister Brody Lee. And they team up with with Thunder, Thunder, Thunder Rosa. Yay! So Thunder Rosa comes out. So they all team up against. Uh, well, the remnants of the outcasts, Paige, Soraya Knight, and Ruby, 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 Ruby Soho, as they team up with Sky Black and the AEW TBS champion, the lovely Maria Brink 2.0, Julia Hart, who came out with, uh, well, they came out with Harley Cameron, looking amazingly hot, <sighs> her titties. Sion Quinn, you lucky bastard. Bagging that hot piece of ace, Danny L. Mm. Anyway, alright. So, this was a kind of sloppy match. So a little bit of a botch with with uh, Julia going. They were doing a like a, a four-way suplex, which didn't go the, uh, go the right way for the heels. And Julia goes to the wrong side and was like, oh, shit, came back to the right side. Came back to the other side and just didn't look good. Uh, long story short, uh, so they hit that. Then they start hitting their finishers. And then we go we get down to Anna Jay and Julia Hart. They slug it out in the middle of the ring. Sky Blue tags herself in and hits a super kick on Anna Jay, but didn't really affect her. And then she locks in the Queen Slayer and then Sky Black. Tapped out in just under nine minutes. And that's pretty much it. Match itself, meh, two and a half out of five stars. And then, this week on Collision, I, I think it's on Collision or Battle of the Belts, we got Anna J taking on Julia Hart for the TBS Championship. So, we'll see what happens with that. And we move on with that. Um, I thought there was something on, um, on Rampage. I might have missed that in my notes. Um, oh yeah, it's, uh, that's not a, um, uh, I thought there was something going to be on, on Rampage this week. Besides the Hardy Boys, you know, Jeff Hardy goes on, I think it was Instagram, and he said, he's pissed. He's like, we will not be on... The, the live show of Dynamite. We will, we have been stuck in the dimension called AEW Rampage. Tony Khan. Treating the Hardys like shit. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think this... 
this run that the Hardys are on is pretty much going to be over pretty soon because they're really did doing nothing. Maybe I mean they're probably going to have a uh, you know a showdown with Private Party coming up. Probably be on Rampage. Why? I don't know, but I think that there was something else on that was supposed to be on Rampage. I forgot what it was, but any, in any case, we get that. Alright, so we move on. Alright, then we get, I don't know why we had this, but we get a promo from that schmuck, Wheeler Utah, the Ring of Honor Pure Champion. He doesn't like Eddie Kingston, well, who does? And challenges him, oh, that's the Rampage match. Okay, so I went, I forgot, now I found out. So he challenges him for the Continental Crown, or the Continental title. Not the Intercontinental, the Continental title, on Rampage. So if he wins, he's a four, or he's a quadruple champion. So it is for all the belts. I guess. Why can't it just unite into one belt? So we get all that. So that's going to happen on Rampage. That'll probably be your main event of the evening. So, yeah. So this whole Continental uh, Crown, the Triple Crown title, I call it. Sometimes the the actual Continental Classic belt will be defended. Sometimes the Ring of Honor belt will be defended. Sometimes the Never Open, the Never Open Weight Strong title will be defended. Or all three belts will be defended. I still think they should just merge it into one belt. Do we really need, you know, Eddie Kingston, the the whole three belts? I'm just saying. He's eventually going to lose all those belts probably by by, uh, by, the, by the springtime. I don't know who he's losing the, the Ring of Honor title to. At this point, I don't even know. Maybe just have Roddy beat him. He is a former Ring of Honor champion after all. Just have, go do that, Tony Khan. Roddy versus Eddie Kingston. Roddy gets some help from, you know, Adam Cole and the, and the Undisputed Kingdom to win the belt. He gets back the Ring of Honor title. But I think the second or third time. He goes on a mega run with it because, you know, how Ring of Honor, they don't defend the belts. See what happens with that. And then eventually, uh, probably a Battle of the Valley or whenever... You know, maybe the show after that, Eddie Kingston will lose that belt. I mean, he is, he is supposed to fight Gabriel, uh, who's he fighting? Gabriel Kidd on Saturday at Battle of, the, Battle of the Valley. Might lose that belt. We'll see. And then the Continental Classic, he hopefully doesn't lose it to Wheel of Yuta. But, we got all that. Alright, so, boring, pointless promo from Wheel of Yuta, but on Friday night, Rampage. Continental Crown title on the line. And we'll see what happens with that. Alright, so I gave that 2.5 out of 5 stars. And that's it. Alright, then we hear the music. As we go back to Daly's place. We go. We hear the music of the Undisputed Kingdom. So we have Adam Cole! Baby! The Devil and his minions. We have Bordlow! And we, uh, we also have Yachty! Adam! And we also have the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions... I'm Matt Taven, and the man who punch, punches people in the dick and gives him a power driver. That's Mike Canellas Bennett. And his first time in Daily's Place. Same thing for Roddy. That's interesting. Alright, so they're there. I thought they were going to call a promo, but we see Brian Keith, the bounty hunter in the ring. He's taking on Roddy in a meaningless garbage match. Four and a half, almost four and a half minute match. Uh, kind of went back and forth. But in the end, Roddy gets the win with the end of heartache. Bing, bang, boom. That was it. So Roddy gets the win. Match gave two and a half out of five stars. And then after the match, uh, like I mentioned earlier in, in the video, Adam Cole gets in the ring, sits down, and basically cuts the same promo he, he uh, cut last week, promising that the team is going to win all the belts. Why did you have to do an after-match promo saying the same thing? You didn't have to do that. 
Just let Roddy win. You look good on TV and then leave. I mean, we'll see you. Some, we'll see you tomorrow on um on Twitch. We'll see you this weekend. But you didn't really have to cut that promo, dude. Didn't have to cut it. That's it. All right, then we go to the back with Manet Piquette. Uh, she brings out Deanna Perrazzo. Looking hot. Whoa. She came out. She had her, like, a, like, a, like a jacket on. Like, like, I'm kind of like this. Not this jacket, but... And then she, she has a nice little little bra on. Steve Macklin, you beast. Anyway. So, she comes out and wants the women's title from Tony Storm. And she tells us that she's going to make her date, but... On collision, and she will face this woman who uh, comes in. It's Red Velvet from your mama's kitchen, and she accepts the challenge. So, Saturday Night Collision, we got Diana Perrazzo's debut against Red Velvet. That's it. Guess who wins? You say Red Velvet, I'm gonna have to beat you. Diana should win that easily. She's gonna win that. I think at Revolution, we'll get Diana Perrazzo and Tony Storm, which I think is a little bit early. I'd rather have that at Double or Nothing. Or maybe around Fighter Fest. Fight for the Fall in Time. Well, basically between... Well, after Revolution, I would do that. Sometime between March and April. But, I mean, we'll see what happens with, with that. Alright, so I gave that two and a half out of five stars. Then we have... Go JR on commentary for our main event of the evening. A Texas Tornado match. Which means no rules, false count anywhere match. So we had uh, Mr. Uh, Justin Roberts introduce the big chat boy. Woo! Ric Flair comes out with it's Stink. So Stink comes out with his good buddy, Joby Allen. How you doing? I'm so emo. I don't even get much sleep. Look at me. I'm so emo. I look like I, I stole so much cocaine. Uh, I live in Seattle. So they come out. Come out. They take on Kazuki Take a shit off. Go to catch the and put up powerhouse Will Hobbs. Don Callis at ringside as well. Didn't really see him that much, but in any case, this was a slobber knocker to end the show. It's also with Sting. Chasing Will Hobbs into the crowd. Hits him with a chair. But then eventually Hobbs comes back. Uh, while in the ring. Takeshita and Darby follow in a different area. Of the of the crowd. And then we see Hobbs is sent into the crash. Into some crash cans. And then back at ringside. Takeshita hits a really sick German suplex on Darby. Woo. And you thought the German suplex is rolling down the ramp. Last week was sick. Hmm. So we go to break. If I can get my notes right. Okay. We come back. Darby is tossed into a power slam. Hmm. And then Sting, looking tired as fuck, somehow made the save. And then the catcher and Hobbs sent Darby launching him in the midair again. Last nasty landing. Head first into the ring ropes. Ow! That was crazy. I mean, Darby, I mean, Darby's taking all these these crazy spots, and you're like, ah! I mean, God forbid he's gonna he's gonna die or, or end up end up paralyzed in the middle of the ring. Or die in the middle of the ring if he doesn't slow down. Stop! Please, for the love of God, stop. Calm down. Take it easy. Take it easy. Remember what Andrade told you a long time ago? Take it easy. Take it easy. But will we? No. Alright, so we get that. And then uh, Sting gets kneed down by the catch dog. And then Ric Flair comes in. Why? And tries to chop down the the big big redwood tree that's Will Hobbs. That ain't gonna work. And then the catcher grabs him. About to beat his ass. And then Sting comes in for the save. 
And then all of them fight on the stage. You know, Flair gets out of out of dodge. They fight on the stage. Darby gets sent into the wall. I guess somewhere on the stage. And then the catch that goes for a running knee. It missed. And then Darby climbs the stage. And hits a coffin drop onto the catch dog. Who kind of like guided him down. You know, instead of catching, he was like, ah, Die! Come on, dude. Anyway, and then Hobbs and Sting fight along the, uh, the, the, the big part of the stage where the, where the crowd is. And they're fighting, they're fighting, they beat each other up. And then Sting grabs uh, a Scorpion Death Drop. And he hits it off the platform. And there was like two tables. I didn't even see him at ringside at the start of the match. They were just conveniently there. And I thought it, I think it looked like Sting overshot it. Because he went through one table. And it kind of broke. I thought it was it looked like he was supposed to go through both tables. But in any case, he hits the Scorpion Death Drop. And basically, you know, I thought he was dead. And I was like, oh my god, he's dead! But somehow he was able to put his hand over Hobbs. Like just like pfft. one two three, Darby and Sting get the win. Sting goes to twenty seven and one, uh, twenty seven and zero, I should say. In basically ten minutes, that was it. And then uh, Doc Samson and the referees are like checking on Sting to make sure he's okay. Flair's kind of concerned, and then we kind of hear, I think it was um. Doc Samson or something. One of the referees, I think it was maybe Paul Turner, said, his back, his back! So, Sting, 64-year-old Sting, probably broke his fucking back. Gotta stop, dude. Stop. Because you're gonna get seriously hurt. 64 years old doing that shit. I mean, I know Terry Funk, when he was in his 60s, did a lot of crazy shit. Into some of, into part of his 70s as well, but he knew when to give it up. He knew when to stop. And thankfully he stopped. Like around around, around his early 70s. Before you know he, he, he uh, retired. And then sadly he got dementia. Which uh, you know. Pretty much. Pretty much uh, you know killed him and everything. So. But really I think. I think. If you want to keep going in wrestling, I think you should put a cap on it around 50, between 50 and 60. You know, you don't want to see old farts like Flair and Hogan. Hogan is training for one more match. Why, Hogan? Why, Hulkster? Why? Brother! I'm going to do another match, brother! Why? So we can see you crippled in the ring? You can't even get up. They got to get a forklift to take your old ass out? No. Just stop. Stop, Hogan. Stop. Flair wants to do another match. Why? Why? Mike, Mike Kyoto said that, uh, freaking Taker finished up with all his surgeries and, you know, all he's been, uh, kind of getting in shape again. Taker wants to do one more match. I mean, you're the goat of all goats there, Mr. Uh, Mark Calloway, but really, what else is there for you to do? I mean, do I want to see Roman and... Do I want to see Taker in the ring again? Yes. But, in a, in a match... I mean, if he could do one more match and look good in a match, like he hasn't missed a beat, I'm all for it. But if he comes out and just like he looks, he looks winded and he's not the taker that we used to know, I'm like, why? But yeah, but Sting, you know, he wants to go out the way he wants to go out. Sorry for that. But that's that. But in any case, they get to win the match. Match, I gave 3.25 out of 5 stars. And then, after the match, Tony Baloney gets in the ring. Because the match ended at 10 o'clock. 
I was like, oh, it'd probably be an overrun. I was like, oh, are they gonna are they gonna debut Mercedes One A? No. Was Mercedes One A gonna debut? No. Tony Baloney gets in the ring, and Sting somehow I don't know how he was even able to stand. He's there with Flair and Darby, and I think one of the referees, and I think Doc Samson was in the ring too. I don't know. I forgot who was in the ring. I couldn't tell. But in any case. Tony Baloney asks Sting, uh, he kind of mentions the mat, his last match at Revolution, March the, uh, March the 4th, in Greensboro, South Carolina, at, no, at the Greensboro Coliseum, and he asks Sting, well, who's your opponent gonna be? And before he even said a word, we hear the music of the Young Bucks, who... Uh, as I said in my NXT video, they were backstage. Along with Pac, but we didn't see Pac. Maybe see him this weekend, maybe. But the Young Bucks come out. And they have a new look. They come out. Uh, Matt Jackson's in a black suit. Black hat. You know, porn stash. Was, you know, somebody called it a douchebag stash. But... And then Nick Jackson comes out in white. So it's basically the black and white version of the Bucks. They look great. They come out. I mean, the crowd kind of gave them a mid-reaction. But, you know, they came out. And I'm like, holy shit, it's, it's Crockett and Tubbs from Miami Vice. Well, or soda. I mean, it looked like they were extras from Miami Vice. So anyway, they come out and they just have a stare down with Darby and Sting. Darby's like, come on. So I'm like, I'm like, is this the way that Sting's going to go out? We're going to have a, a fucking tag team match, a revolution, with Sting and Darby facing the Bucks, so that means the Bucks are going to put over Sting and Darby? I'd rather do this match early that, rather than lead up to freaking revolution. I would do it next week. Maybe in the next couple weeks. But not at revolution. Sting should fight somebody else at revolution, not the box. I'm just saying. And what I would do, I would turn Darby heel and Darby's like attack Sting from behind doing a promo or, some, or a maybe they have a match or something like that. Or maybe Darb, uh, you know, Darby's getting beat up. Sting comes out to save him. And maybe like Darby's blinded or something like that. And then Darby just knocks the fuck out of Sting. And then Sting's like, oh, pissy pissy. He's like, what did you do that for? And then like, the weeks, like, a couple weeks go by. And Darby doesn't say anything. He just leaves. And then eventually Sting's like, pulls Darby aside. He's like, why did you do that to me? Darby's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Then he attacks him again. There's the heel turn. Then at Revolution, you have Sting versus Darby. And then Darby can come out, like, maybe the night before or the week before, weeks before, saying, I'm tired of living in your shadow. This and that. You know, you're getting all the spotlight. I'm going to retire you, old man. I'm going to send you to a retirement home where you and Flair can, can party it up, party it up in, in a retirement home. Stuff like that. You know, oh, come on. I'm tired of wearing this face paint. And we get the old Darby. What's going to happen? Probably not. Probably not. So, I mean, we'll have to see what happens on Rampage and Collision this week, this weekend, or maybe next week on Dynamite. But if they lead up to this match at at, at Revolution, you know Sting's gonna freaking no sell the super kicks. You know he's gonna happen. Sting's gonna win again. Sting's gonna win. He's gonna get his moment in the sun. Gonna ride off into the sunset. Never to be heard from again. Flair's gonna go out the same way. You're gonna go out with his buddy. But I wouldn't even fathom doing this match. It needs to be a singles match. It 
has to happen. I, I don't care about Sting and Darby as a tag team. I don't really give a shit. But if they do this match, it's going to be good. I'll say, I'll say this. It will be good, but still, it should not be a tag team match. It should be Sting and Darby one-on-one. -on -one. Whether Darby is a heel and attacks Sting and says, I'm tired of being your shadow. Or it's just a traditional one-on-one -on -one match. And Sting is like, it's like, the one man that I want to fight in my final match is you, Darby. So we have a teacher versus student type of thing. And then Darby's like, I'm going to put you down, old man. So you think he's going to turn heel. He's like, I'm going to put you down. I'm going to retire you. I'm going to be an honor to face you. Something like that. But in any case, we got all that. And that ends uh, Dynamite. And Dynamite, you know, wasn't great. Could have been a whole lot better. And it would have been a way better show if Mercedes Monet would have debuted. I'm just saying. They had it right there. Tony Khan, once again, drops the ball. The perfect setting for Mercedes Monet to debut. Now it's like she debuts in a like in Norfolk, Virginia, or she appears on Collision. Or whatever or whatever. It doesn't have that oomph. It doesn't have that impact. No pun intended, but now we're still playing the, the, the waning game. When is Mercedes going to debut? Or at all, if she's going to debut at all. I say probably not. I'm still thinking, and a lot of people kind of agree with me. You know, Joe Cronin, I agree with Joe Cronin's original thought that Mercedes, is, this whole thing is a ruse. That, that AEW wants you to think that they're going to sign her. And she wants you to think that she's going to sign with AEW. But in turn, she fucks us all over and says, Hey, look at me. I'm, I'm at the Rumble. Number 30. Not they're going to win. But she's there. The crowd goes nuts. Michael Cole has a freaking orgasm in his pants. Oh my! The boss is back! And she helps Bailey win or something like that. I mean, she will help Bailey beat EO most likely at WrestleMania, or they have Bailey and Naomi's coming back probably at the Rumble. Sasha and Naomi team up as Boss Glow, go after Oscar and Kyrie when they win the tag team belts, whatever that might be. I'm hoping it would rather do it at WrestleMania for them to win it. But just saying, um, and they have Sasha and Bailey. Win the tag team belts. Oh, it's not Sa well, Sasha Bailey or Sasha and Naomi win the tag team belts, and then Sasha, Sasha and Bailey can fight Oscar, Kyrie, and Io, and then Becky comes into the situation, and then eventually uh, Dakota Kai will get into that little Black Lotus Triad group. Not that she needs to be there, and then. Probably sometime in the summer, we'll have like an eight-woman tag team match. When you bring you bring in uh, you got Sasha, Bailey, Becky. You kind of try to get the four horsemen in there, but I would, I think we're gonna get a six-woman tag. It'll be Oscar, Eo, and Kyrie against Sasha, Bailey, and Becky. So three fourths of the four horsewomen, since uh, horseface Charlotte Flair is out. I don't know to when. Because she just got surgery on her on her leg. She's doing the rehab right now. So, she's not going to be at Mania. Most likely not be at Mania. I think she's coming back sometime in the summer. Probably by SummerSlam. But, who knows with, you know, who knows with Horsefree Charlotte Flair. She can come back earlier than that. But, we'll see. But hopefully she's getting better and that's all that matters. Alright, that's it everybody for my review. So, Dynamite. Could have been a lot better, but I still gave it a respectful 6.5 out of 10 stars. Let me know what you guys think of the show down below in the comments section. And don't forget to like the video. Stick that thumb straight up the woo-ha. And uh, subscribe to this channel. And maybe we'll get the 500 subs. Maybe not. We'll see. And subscribe to my other channels as well. Show me love and support. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hit that bell to get more. 
because if you miss it, you missed it, and share the video all over the internet, and that's pretty much it. So I'm out of here, guys. Uh, I'll be back later tomorrow night with your Ring of Honor review, and then we're going to get you ready for the second weekend of January, about to hit the midpoint. Uh, we'll talk about SmackDown and Rampage on Friday night, and then late Saturday night, I'll do, um, well, Saturday night, I'll do Collision, and then Sunday, I'll do, Sunday, early Sunday, I'll do Battle of the Belts over on my Killer Demons channel. So, got all that coming away this weekend, and then right back at it Monday night for Monday Night Raw, the Martha Luther King edition, the yearly Martha Luther King show. And then, pretty much, that's it for that. So, stay tuned. Please hit that bell, hit that subscribe button as well, and stay tuned for more good videos and more epic analysis or analysis from me, your travel god, Peter Joseph, and that's pretty much it. So, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, and until next time, my friends, peace out, rock on, and rock hard with your cuckoos. And if you're not down with that, well, you're a fuckboy and a bitch. And pretty much me and everybody in the Purge and the Prophecy that are way better than you, and you really know it, we all got three words for you. The greatest three words in the history of this sport on this website and in real life. Fuck you, man. That's it. Until then. Adios. And as my good friend Kenny Omega would say, goodbye. And good night. Bang! That's it.